let's talk about chips. You know, the Android operating system is undoubtedly the single most disruptive force in computing in the last 20 years. Whether you're a large company in any industry or a small startup trying to build any new gadget, the Android operating system is the most accessible and the most capable operating system you can get your hands on. It's open source. No wonder the computing revolution in China took off on the backs of the Android operating system and is now the fastest growing mobile computing market in the world. Android started out in the phone industry completely disrupted the phone market. Then it worked its way into tablets. But that's not where it's going to end. Because it's an operating system that's free to all, because it's an operating system that allows every company, every country, every industry to freely innovate, and because it is a virtually complete operating system, by virtue of the fact that so many of us make contributions to it. There are more engineers working on Android. There are more engineers working around the world in the Android ecosystem than any ecosystem today. And so it stands to reason that the positive feedback system is going to fuel it's disruption. At this point, it's kind of hard to, to, to imagine stopping it. But it's wonderful for the world. When we think about building Tegra, our mobile processor, we think about what we can do to take the Android operating system, in combination, take it into new markets. Markets where our expertise can especially serve markets where visual computing matters. We started out by building the Tegra 2, the world's first dual-core processor. At the time, people asked us, why would you need a dual-core processor? Then we took that to Tegra 3, the world's first quad-core processor. People asked us why we needed a quad-core processor. And it's all very clear now that in a mobile environment, in a mobile context, there are more and more activities that are happening simultaneously. So the question is, where do we go from here? Now, there's some new industries that I think Android will continue to advance into and make a contribution to. One of them, of course, is television. That one's a foregone conclusion. It's not if, it's simply when. 4K televisions are coming. Smart televisions are coming. It stands to reason that Android's going to be a very important factor in that. Consoles, we happen to believe that the Android operating system is going to be the most important platform for game consoles in the future. And the reason for that is because you have all of your digital asset in Android. Why wouldn't you want to be home, connected to television, and then have access to all of your photographs or all of your music, of all, your, all of your movies, and all of your video games? It's simply a matter of time. It's simply a matter of time before Android also disrupts the video game console industry. It is the reason why we built Shield, so that we can engage it and start to make a contribution to it. We also believe that Android would make a difference in the car industry. The car industry is one of the most exciting industries in the world for many of us because we love cars, but there's a second reason. We happen to believe that the car will be your most important mobile computer. It is likely to be our most personal robot someday. It is already our most expensive consumer electronics owning, and it stands to reason that it's also going to be the most advanced. Now, it happens to have some of the most pioneering minds and some of the brightest engineers working in that industry, because they also love cars. And so I think this is an area that's going to make huge contributions, and I'll come back to that in just a moment. 
And so the question then, after Tegra II, dual first, the world's first dual core, after Tegra III, the world's first quad core, and then we double the performance of that with Tegra IV, what's next for us? What's next for us? I mean, what could we possibly do? I guess we could, we could do eight cores, but that seems pretty pedestrian. That seems pretty obvious. We could do 12 cores, that's more than eight. Um, however, I think that maybe we could do better than that. What we decided to do was we decided to make Tegra K1 the world's first 192 core processor. <laughs> 192 CUDA cores, all programmable by, the, by, the, by, the, um, by programs, all fully programmable, all massively parallel. And this is the first GPU, the reason why we decided to call it Tegra K1 is because this is the first GPU that took a vast jump from the previous generation. It's almost inappropriate to call it Tegra 5 because it's simply not linear. We decided to call it Tegra K1. We decided to call it Tegra K1 because it's based on the Ke Kepler architecture. As many of you know, Kepler is the most successful GPU architecture that we have ever created, and it's the most important GPU architecture the industry had ever known. This architecture, because it is so energy efficient, has made it possible, and so, so programmable, has made it possible for us to extend the GPU from not just desktop computers to workstations, but all the way into the cloud with grid and into supercomputers with Tesla. One singular architecture, all compatible, is now able to span computing from a few watts all the way to megawatts, from 192 cores all the way to 36 million cores running our nation's fastest supercomputer, all based on the exact same architecture called Kepler. So we're really, really excited today that with Tegra, we've bridged the gap.